Welcome to The Business Coach, a show in which you are to help entrepreneurs better their business. My name is Ian Dennis and today on the show we'll be exploring the production business. I'll be meeting up with Robert Osimba of Tufilamu Pictures. I want to find out his story and what exactly are some of the challenges he faces in his day-to-day -day business. Welcome to the show. I'm a janitor. See it, no one cares what you do or do not do. You're just but a cleaner. So Robert, welcome to the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you, thank you, Ian. All right, you have a very interesting story. You are an engineer who now got some love into film and you got into this particular business. How exactly did all this start off? Professionally, I studied uh, telecommunication engineering at Kenya Institute of Mass Communication. So uh, while, I was doing, uh, while I was doing engineering, I used to direct some stuff. I, will, I, I used to love camera work. Mm -hmm. And so fortunate enough, uh, I got to church in Nairobi Chapel. Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate enough to get, uh, to get someone, uh, like a mentor, someone by the name Connie Donlon. She was from, from Canada. She had come, I think, as an exchange program to Chapel. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was uh, here for like a year. And she took me through production, you know. Oh, she mentored you into that. She mentored me into production. And she, she was very good at it, because she mentored me in camera work, directing stuff, a bit of editing, how some works. So I was able, for one year, I was able to grasp uh, so many things from her. So that instilled so much hope, and something that I really wanted to do more and more. And so while I was still doing uh, engineering, I used to do production, I used to do film. So it reached a point where, you know, I started submitting short films to the festival, got awards. Yeah, oh, so cool. during that time, you were learning, you also, you will make your own films? Yes, today I have an exam in engineering. Uh -huh. Tomorrow I'm uh -huh. in the field shooting, uh -huh. you know, with uh, cameras. I was not very good at it, mm -hmm. but I used to follow people who were better than myself. Mm -hmm. And I just loved the craft, you know, just telling stories from me from the lens perspective. And at, at what point now you decided now to move from being an engineer to now becoming a full filmmaker? How did that transition happen? This when when I found it so difficult to... When I, when, when I was done with the campus, I, I, I got a job with... Uh, uh, I was installing fibre. Mm -hmm. Safaricom fibre through Huawei. Uh -huh. So the first so person to installing fibres in Nairobi? I'm telling you, all those buildings you see there, my guy, from Hazina, Hazina Towers, uh -huh to many buildings, mm -hmm. I've taken to many buildings. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who installed those fibers. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, when the fiber was just rolling up, you know. Uh -huh. so, then installing them across. Yes, yes. I think even there are photos of me in the mast, you know, checking the fiber, uh -huh. something we used to call MDF, you mm -hmm. know. I have photos in my Facebook when I used to do that. Uh -huh. So it reached a point where it was very difficult uh, to do engineering mm -hmm. and do production. Mm -hmm. At first I used to lie to myself like I can do both. Mm -hmm. You know, when, I'm, when I'm, I can pr produce or direct or create films, mm -hmm. and then at some time I can do engineering, you know, doing the, the, the internet thing or the mask or the fiber thing. Mm -hmm. But it reached, it reached a point where both were so demanding. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. engineering was demanding, production was demanding. And I remember at a certain period of my life, I posted it even on Facebook. I said, like, um, I, I don't know what to choose between my profession mm -hmm. and what I love. Uh -huh. And that was the last post I, uh, I posted when I was uh, as an engineer with a photo. Mm -hmm. What prompted that, that particular that, that, I, can, I cannot forget that day because I'd, I'd done a, a short film mm -hmm. about uh, post election violence. Mm -hmm. So I submitted it into a, a, a certain festival mm -hmm. and it was picked. Mm -hmm. So this was called to book initiative media awards. Mm -hmm. And then, so I was called like, yeah, you know, we are, we are, we are hosting, uh, we are doing the award ceremony uh -huh. at, at about six. Mm -hmm. So the same day they were doing awards, the same day I had an apron, I had my helmet, I had my reflector. Uh -huh. I was on top of a roof, just mm -hmm. fixing fiber. Uh -huh. So that day I carried, I remember I carried a, a nice shirt. You uh, packed yourself, had, had waiting for the know, evening, pants, after uh, work. Uh, shirts, and, uh, good, you know, shoes. You know, I, have, I had like a small bag. So I had to fit my, I had to fit my, I had a safety booth, uh -huh. and they're really the big, big and heavy. Ones. Yes, uh -huh. I had safety booths, I had a helmet, and I had a refle uh, reflector. So I had to, you know, insert and fit that mm -hmm. in the bag. Your my packed clothes for this award ceremony. Uh -huh. Yes, and then go and walk to the to the red carpet. Mm -hmm. You know, the funny bit is when you're walking to the red carpet, I didn't know who to leave the bag with. So I'm here dressed. <laughs> you alone? You didn't have any friends? I'm, I'm going. I'm, I'm nominated as the uh, as a. Uh, I think it was best director. Mm -hmm. Yes, best director mm -hmm. for the film. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking, I'm walking toward uh, towards the red carpet, and I have this really dirty bag 
with an helmet, uh, a safety yes, boot. Well. Now the engineer me and some, I think some keys, mm -hmm. some you know pliers, cutters. That was my life. <laughs> so at that point, now you decided after that particular yeah, one, you quit engineering. Last. That was the the, the last of me in the yeah. engineering sector. So you told yeah. me after that you got a job also into the in the production field. How did that happen? Yeah. Now fast forward. Uh, after that, after doing that, then. I quit my job, mm -hmm. tried doing production here and there. Yeah. Then I was uh, so lucky enough. I was doing like freelance, people. and uh, at the same time, you have all the resources that you want. Yeah. yeah, so I was even able to do, I was able to do not the short film that I wanted, mm -hmm. and uh, I think this production has just changed my view about film, because mm -hmm. they gave me like everything that I needed. You know, I used to come, I used to write, I used to do scripting. Mm -hmm. So I came with the idea at night, tomorrow morning I roll it to the boss and like, okay, we're shooting it in the weekend. Mm -hmm. So you provide the budget and we shoot it. You know. So I, I, I kept doing that short film, mm -hmm. short film, mm -hmm. you know, calling people because I'm big, I'm big, I'm, I'm big in collaboration. Mm -hmm. I like collaborating with people. Mm -hmm. Bring your skill, bring your time, let's work something together and see how best we can do it. Mm -hmm. So I used to make calls and telling people like, yeah, I have this script, can do you think something that we can work on? Uh, and then people used to come together. Interesting. So for how long were you there in the production house? I was about a year and a half, uh -huh. a year or two, uh -huh. I think. And at what point now did you decide now to transition from employment now to business. Many people don't uh, don't uh, understand what Tufilam means. Tufilam is a Swahili name. It's like Tuende, Tuimbe, uh, Tutembe. Yeah. So Tufilam is like less film. Uh -huh. Fila, you know Tufilam is Swahili, yeah, yeah, yeah. less film. So two makes it, uh, remove it from a single person. To a group. Because there's yes. a group of people coming together to do yes. film. All right. So in Swahili, if you say Tuende, it means all yeah, of us, all of us, us are going. going. Right. If you say Tuimbe, all of us are singing. So Tufilamu, all of us are, because it's a group thing. It was uh, the solid foundation of Tufilamu is being a group. Different people coming from different places, just doing film. So it's just a business, so it was a name. business name. All right. But you see, that limited us a lot. Yeah. You could get like, if you want to do government tenders, you can't get. Can get you have to, you have to be uh, limited. If you want a gig to work, if you have a very good idea and you want to present it to Bidico, you're limited yeah. because you're not a company. Yeah. You're just a business name. No one will trust you with that. Necessary documentation required to pre-qualify to treat with corporates and governments. Every business does wish to trade with large corporations and government through the tendering process. However, this may not be the case soon after inception of the business, but it's always better to position the business early enough for future potential business by acquiring the following documents. Incorporation Certificate most organizations prefer to trade with legal entities in the form of a limited liability company. The incorporation certificate is issued to registered limited liability companies. The CR12. These documents indicate the company's shareholders as well as the shareholding distribution. One applies for the documentation at Sharia House, company PIN, director's individual PINs, and tax compliance. Tax is administered in transactions either as VAT or withholding tax. Therefore, the necessary documentation of the company as well as the directors are required. Industry documentation. If you operate in an industry mandated by a governing body, the accreditation certificate details will be required to tender. An example will be if you're in the tourism industry, you'll be required to have an IITA certificate to validate your operation. Company profile. Here you indicate the services offered by the business, indicate the list of your past clients, and also the experience the company has had in the industry. So now, the business is here, it's registered. So what kind of services do you guys offer to your clients? And as a business, how exactly have you been marketing yourself? Um, does, uh, we do short films, mm -hmm. we do feature films, mm -hmm. we do commercial, that's where we're going, heavy in commercial. Mm -hmm. And uh, just recently, when we had a meeting, we want to also focus on startups. How did you guys end up raising capital for the business so to help enable you purchase some of the equipments that you use? Um, or how exactly were you guys going about it? Uh, equipment wise, we self funded ourselves. Oh. Just plowing back profit that yes. you're getting into the business? Profits and our own cash. Mm -hmm. Where you have hustled, whether you have asked your mom from it or my, your friend, mm -hmm. you just turn lucky dog, we put resources together, we get a camera. Because they're very expensive. Oh, yes. So we get a camera. We do that, we get some, then we realize, like, hey, but then we don't have lights. You do that, you buy. So from the work you're doing, you just put a plow back the money together. Yes, yes. And one of the things that you mentioned to me is in terms of one of the challenges is cash flow management. Because you guys are now already in business and money is coming in and that has been a challenge because you have a whole team that you need to serve. How exactly have you guys been going about it? We're not business people. Mm -hmm. As we're coming from, let's shoot this, we know how to shoot. We know how to produce stuff. You're good at your craft. We, that's what we know, mm -hmm. but we don't know how to sell it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we don't know how to sell it. I went, and once we sell it, you know, we are used to today give me a gig, a certain, you know, certain cash. Mm -hmm. Then I might survive with that for like two, three months. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, I'll go back to zero because uh, remember, 
I'm depending on clients mm -hmm. who come forward. Mm -hmm. So we have been attending uh, mentorship programs. Mm -hmm. Uh, recently, we attended a German one, which is on impact. It's called Impact, mm -hmm. and they've been very instrumental. They've been very, very oh. nice. Now to go they hooked us. to learn yeah, more about business. Yes, because you see, we we realize like there's no doubt about it. Our craft is really good. Mm -hmm. We're not yet there, but we're trying to to reach that point. So our craft, the quality is nice. The sound, we you know, we nail it. But who, who's a who's a market? How are we gonna sell it if we don't know the business language? Mm -hmm. So and we have to go to mm -hmm. programs like Impact. Mm -hmm where Empot will come, they hook you up with a finance guy and tell you, by the way, my guy, if you don't know profit and loss, then what kind of a business are you doing? If you keep squandering every gig you get, if you keep living on uh, per project basis, then you're not making any money. You're making we revenue, but you're not making money. Yeah. You're not making money. Interesting. And finally, what are some the aspirations that as to fill up uh, pictures you guys do have in terms of in this particular production field? We have the muscles to, to fund our own projects, to fund our own film so that we can be able to tell our own authentic stories. We believe Africa, not only Kenya, has a, has a really organic story that needs to be told. Recently, we recently did 1988, which received a very good you know, review from people. And they're like, when are we going to see the movie? Because we did a short film. So like, we, we want to reach a point where we can be able to fund our own film. We want to reach a point where we can be able to collaborate with big film production houses and come up with a story like Westgate. We don't have to struggle to do those stories. Don't, don't so you want to tell African stories? We want to tell African stories because we, we believe we, have, we are very rich in stories and very good content from Africa. We don't need to struggle. So after the break, I'll be linking up Robert Asimba to Philip Brayson, the owner of Insignia Productions, a company that has been behind most of the production that we see not only here on KTN, but also across channels here in Africa and the world. So keep it right here on The Business Coach, where we help entrepreneurs better their business.